Hey guys, it's Danny. Okay, so some of my viewers requested some updates on some specific orchids. So today I'm gonna show you how they're doing, the good and the bad, of course, but that's just how it goes. So first of all, the Catacetum orchids. You might remember that I did not pot them when I should have because I really wanted to transport them bare root. And what they did was just grow a massive amounts of roots everywhere in the air, trying to cling on to stuff. But they are actually doing pretty well. I expected it. These guys are pretty indestructible, at least these hybrids. I don't know about other species, but yeah, it, it takes a lot to kill these guys. They're better than Phalaenopsis in this regards. So um, they did put out a lot, a lot of roots. Hopefully you can see here, they're going everywhere. And these are the older roots, which just went to search for stuff to cling on to. It's really not about humidity. I don't think orchid roots go towards humidity. There was no humidity upwards. They just look for stuff to cling on to. So there's a whole bunch of roots going everywhere, swirling around the pseudobulbs that were created prior to me potting them, but they have adjusted pretty, pretty well. So in this uh, case, I have a lot of roots swirling inside the pot right here and actually attaching to the sides. I'm not sure if I can give you a proper look, but there you go. This is what's going to happen in clay pots. They will attach to the sides of the pot. It's pretty okay. And with catacetums, actually, I don't intend on repotting them every year and cutting the old roots. I have a feeling the roots die every two years. Just my hunch. And uh, that was the black magic. And this is the wine delight. Same story with this guy. Roots everywhere in the pot, outside of the pot, but they are growing fast. They need a lot of water feeding and so on, but they are doing quite fantastic. I was not expecting them to die or anything, really. So yeah, if you're looking for a very hardy orchid, this is it, <laughs> this is the one. Go for the hybrids, I'm not sure about the species. Signotus Wine Delight and Monia Rara Millennium Magic Witchcraft. Very hardy hybrids, both of them. Okay, somebody asked me about the Neophenicia and I did not pot her in the Kokedama style anymore. I'm a big fan of inorganic medium. This is her, she's growing roots at the moment, doing quite nice, did not suffer at all. But again, the Neophenicia is not a finicky orchid at least in my opinion. So she is growing at the moment, no bad effects from dehydration or anything because she can withstand uh, quite large periods of drought. So I was lucky with her from this uh, in this regard and I'm expecting her to not be set back in any visible way. She's growing, it's spring, she's supposed to grow, no blooms, but mine is a pretty young one. I'm not sure next year, it would be awesome to have a flower next year. It's a great possibility that I will have a flower next year. So fingers crossed. And this is the Zygopetalum. This is what's left of him, actually. I swear I'm cursed with Zygopetalums. This guy was doing so, so well when I left and then everything went downhill. He really hates being dry for long periods of time, really hates too much handling, changes in environment and so on. I lost all of the roots. Half of it is gone because it just dried out and desiccated. You can see that this side is not doing all that well as well, but I have some new roots, new growths and so on. But I am sure this guy will be super set back. I will not expect blooms anytime soon. I'm not giving up on him. He's a good boy. He grew very well, looked very well, uh, but yeah, he did not handle everything very, very well. I wouldn't say zygopetalums are easy necessarily, but if you get them to stabilize, they can be quite balanced. Let's call them like that. However, if you mess something up with them root wise or uh, dehydration wise, no, it's not gonna end well. I'll just have to have patience, but here we go. I know you asked about the Zygopetalum. It's my fifth Zygopetalum. I didn't kill it. However, it's not happy. I'm just cursed. This is what happens with me and Zygopetalums. Something always happens. If it's not spider mites, it's just moving out. <laughs> there we go. Another piece of sad news, the Habnaria Medusa. I think she's a goner. So this stuff started to smell pretty bad. And it's not that it's mushy, it's just kind of flexible. I don't know how to explain it. I am not sure if this is alive anymore, if it will sprout or anything. I don't know. When, when I moisten it a bit from time to time, it smells horrible. I'm not sure if it's the sphagnum moss decomposing or this stuff is actually rotting and I don't want to break it to see if there's anything in the core because that will be its doom. But I don't see anything green and it's already May and this is not very normal. So. Let's consider this a goner for now. And I think what happened was, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Maybe it was um, maybe it was too much water because at some point I did soak this corm in 
uh, insecticide as well, just in case there were any spider mites on it. P.S. A little P.S. The insecticide didn't work on the spider mites. We'll talk about it another time. Sad news, but yeah, it does not work. They do not die. Anyway, uh, that's a whole different story. We're gonna get to that, but this corn might uh, not be alive anymore. Already, this is the Sanhopia marizana. Sad and good news with this one. So, because of the whole insecticide spraying and stuff like that, the new growths actually died. They rotted, so I was forced to remove them. But this one is producing new growths on its sides, hopefully you can see. Now, this one isn't potted. This is not permanent. I will try out something with her in the future. You'll see what I mean. Uh, but for now, she's just staying like this on top of ceramics, which I keep pretty moist. But yeah, this is what Stanhopia is doing. Uh, no, she really doesn't like to be sprayed very often with water. Be careful with that. Okay, many of you guys wanted to see the Vandas. So I have uh, two style of potting the Vandas. One that I showed you in the Architop pots. You can see them here. And because I didn't have enough Architop pots, I actually used clay pots with Leca. Pure Leca for these ones. And so far, so good. However, I do think an addition of ceramics might have been good. I don't know. I'm not sure just yet. I've potted this one in ceramics. This is the sad little cakey um, that lost its mom, sadly. But he's growing. He's producing new roots. And oopsie, they're growing quite okay. You can see this tip here. And she's, he is actually producing more roots. So he's doing quite fine, but he's in pure ceramics just for the sake of experiment and also because he is very dehydrated and sick. So the Vandas are okay. This one actually has a flower spike coming somewhere in there. Um, they are okay. They're producing sap. So this means they are absorbing water, but I'm not sure how the roots will handle everything. It's uh, just an experiment because I really don't want to soak them every day anymore. I'm sick of it. Um, but it will take a lot of time for me to notice anything. So just stay tuned with the Vandas. Uh, it's going to take a while to get a proper answer. But so far, so good. They're not rotting. There's no instant rot or anything, and the roots look quite okay. And some of you guys have actually asked me about my Dendrobium nobilis. Yes, they are in a mixture of ceramics and hydrogen. Everything is in inorganic medium, except my Pleiones, which are terrestrials, and I just wanted to try soil. But my Dendrobium nobilis are potted as well in this medium. They're growing quite okay. They're getting hydrated. Uh, no drama. I think they're actually going to do quite well in this medium. I don't see why they shouldn't. But so far, they are doing okay. They grow. Um, they require a lot of water. And this is why I am using slightly more ceramics than Leca. They do drink a lot, a lot of water during growth season. No bullies and deciduous ones, at least. Okay, remember I unmounted my Brassavola little stars and I was forced to chop everything, all the roots, and many of you guys really disliked that. It's, uh, it's normal. Uh, but don't be so dramatic, guys. She's doing fantastic. She's receiving a lot of sun, so she's getting some pigmentation, but she's growing a lot of new growths. You can see that one there, here and there, and a lot of new roots. She's not very dehydrated or anything. She's just good with energy management. And she is just starting to get rehydrated again as the new roots are growing. So you see, no drama. I have a lot of new growth here as well. I'm gonna try to create a nice little bush with this one. But yeah, she's fine if you were wondering. Um, I don't think she's gonna be set back, really. She's creating a ton of roots right now. The moment we unmounted her was actually very good because she was already producing nubbins of new growth and uh, with a new growth comes a new roots. <laughs> so yeah, she'll have a brand new root system in no time. Other than that, as I was showing you, just uh, new root growth. It is spring still, we're going into summer and everything is growing new roots, new growths. So the moment was uh, good <laughs> to do this movement. But as you can see, some orchids handled it much better than others. It really depends on the type of orchid you have and so on. Zycopetalums, I don't know. Maybe they're just very finicky to sudden changes or I'm just cursed with them. Um, so other than that, I don't have any real, real problems and I'm expecting everything to bounce back, except for the losses that I already had and I showed you. Uh, for now, I'm not expecting deaths. But these were the updates. For the most part, everything is going well. We did have losses and things are bouncing back slowly, but that's the way it usually goes when you're doing a dramatic move. 
So thank you guys for watching and thank you for suggesting these updates. If you'd like to see other orchids that I didn't feature, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do another update. If you'd like to see more orchid videos from me and stay up to date, just subscribe to my channel I post on a daily basis. Feel free to leave me comments and suggestions down below. I always check them and I always respond. Also, we have an address where you can send me a letter anytime you feel like it. I'll post the address here and also in the description below. If you click on the left side of your screen, you're gonna be directed to orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets, and also you can talk to us in the forum section and on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. Thank you for joining, I'll see you next time, bye!